Good morning, and welcome to worship at First Christian Church, Disciples of Christ of Danville, Kentucky. My name is Joey Pusateri. I'm the pastor of this delightful congregation, and it is our prayer that this service is a blessing to you. Even though we are in a different setting, separated by distance, we are not separated in spirit. We come to you as a church family. More than ever, may we open our hearts and minds to your love. We ask for your inspiration to lift our spirits and show us the way. May we set aside our concerns and worries. May we come together as one, for now is the time to love and care for one another. Now may we come together in our own way to repeat the prayer of prayers. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. church family, we have been challenged to a new way of life. It is a life that shows us each day just how fragile life is. As a church family, we are challenged to understand and to believe. May we find understanding and appreciation of our yesterdays. As a church family, we ask you be with our leaders to give them wisdom, vision, and understanding as they guide us through these trying times. We have many on our prayer list with special needs and now dealing with additional situations such as stress, anxiety, and frustration. As a church family, let them know that they are not forgotten. Friends, neighbors, community, state, and nations across the world are in special needs. Please wrap your loving arms around all and give us strength, confidence, and willingness to understand and deal with these challenging times. Many feel there is no hope, but your teachings and love will always be our strength to deal with our tomorrows. May we always believe and have faith that this will end and we will always have each other. The remedy for our loneliness and pain begins with acceptance. 
that we are never alone. God is always with us. In Christ's name, amen. Good morning, boys and girls. Mr. Darrell here again with our children's chat today. I hope you are staying healthy at home and that you are uh, doing your homework and getting your classwork done and uh, having a good time with your family. Um, one of the things that I was looking at the other day as I was going through and doing some housework, because i got plenty of time to clean my house now, I was thinking about um, how this pandemic is such a bad thing and how we're spreading and how uh, bad things are being spread from people to people and people are dying and it's a really sad situation. And I said, you know what, I could sit here and I could worry about all this or I could think about how I could spread something good, make something good come out of this. And I really think that God is using this issue today. Because you see people on TV who are making masks. You see people who are going out of their way to help other people that need food, to help other people uh, make them feel good by making signs and thanking all of the first responders, our uh, ambulance workers and our nurses and our doctors who are working with all these people and putting their lives on the line. And I thought, you know, there's got to be a way to think about how we spread good news and how we can spread joy in a time where bad things are being spread. So I was looking and I found on my mantle in my house, um, I have all these different kinds of cards, you know, that come in the mail and people send to you and so forth for different things. And I thought, you know what? I bet a lot of people don't think about when they send a card to somebody how it really makes their day. And here's one I got recently. It says happy day and it's really colorful and it's really bright. And I opened it up and I thought, hmm, it's not my birthday. Um, no, it's not my birthday and it's not Christmas. Hmm, it's Easter's over with. I wonder why I got this card and I opened it up on the inside and it says, a wonderful thing happened today, you. And this was sent to me by uh, Marianne and Lyle McLaughlin. And this card filled me with so much joy in a time that I really needed it. They didn't know that I was having a hard time that day. And when I opened this card and I saw it, it just basically melted all my problems and all my troubles away. And I really love Mary Ann and Lyle McLaughlin for sending this card to me and making me feel really good. Then I thought, okay, on my mantle I still had a Christmas card. Here it is, we're past Easter, it's April going into May, and I still have Easter card or Christmas cards sitting up on my mantle at home. But you know what, it makes me feel good. I love Christmas, it's a time of giving, it's a time of sharing, it's a time of being with family. And so even in this bad time of pandemic, we can turn into something good like Christmas, having a celebration of being with family, and we get to be with them for a long time, and we don't have to worry about it ending real soon. And yes, we'll get over this and we'll move on, but for right now, it's an, having your families with you is an enjoyable time. So I have a Christmas card. Uh, we wish you a merry little Christmas and lots of Christmas joy. Another card that, that makes you feel happy. Some cards that kind of know that people care about you. Um, I have some cards here that I brought. Some of you may know that my mother died a couple months ago and it was all of a sudden and it wasn't expected and it really was a bad situation. And it really hurt a lot that I could no longer see my mother. But people in the church and friends of mine sent me special cards. And these cards are cards for like, God comforts you. And to remind me that even though I'm in a really rough time, God comforts me. God is with me. God is protecting me. And even in this bad time right now, I know God is with me. God is protecting me. God is making sure that I have what I need. And he's not left me. Yes, all the news is going on about all these bad things happening. And yes, people are dying, and I pray for them every day for their families. But you know what? I know God's with them. This is a horrible thing, and it's really hitting a lot of people. But God is with us. And these cards comforted me when I was in a bad situation. So here is my, here is my challenge for you this week. I have also, when my mom died, 
I have a whole bunch of cards that are on paper, different paper, and they're all from my students at school. Sorry guys, it just makes me feel so wonderful that they took the time to make a card saying, Mr. Rickmers, we're thinking about you, we love you, we miss you, we know you're going through a bad time, and we just want you to feel good. So here's my challenge for you. I want you this week to make three cards. Just cards that are like, have a happy day. I'm so glad that you're part of my life, or I'm so glad that God has taken care of you and is with you and protecting you. And I would like you to make these three cards, however you want to, not to a specific person, just keep them very general, okay? Just like, I wish you a great day. You know, I love you. I hope you're, you're doing well. And we're going to take these cards, when you get them finished, at some point, I want you to bring them to the church or have your mom and dad drop them by the church. And we're going to take these cards and we're going to go over to our assisted living facility that our church works with, which is Morning Point. And we're going to give them to Morning Point and let them give them to the people at Morning Point so that they know that, yes, their families love them, but their church family, First Christian Church, who works with them, going doing worship services, knows that we are thinking of them, that we care about them, that we feel good, that they're there and they're safe and they're protected. So we're gonna make cards. I'm gonna make three cards and I'm gonna bring them by the office too, but I want you to do it. I want you to be creative in how you do it. Make them colorful, make them bright, kind of like this, okay? And I want you to put your name on there. You know, for example, like I'll put on Mr. Darrell from First Christian Church. And I want you to do the same thing. And when you get your three cards done and they're all colorful, have mom or dad drop them by the church or someone just drop them by the church and we'll take them and gather them up and we'll get them over to Morning Point so that they can know that they are loved, that their church family in this time of difficulty is thinking about them and loves them and cares for them. So think about that. Think about what kind of cards you would do and how you could brighten somebody's day. You're going to make somebody's day by, their, by them reading your card today. So even in a time where bad things are happening and bad things are being spread, we're going to spread joy. We're going to spread gladness. We're going to spread happiness so that people keep their spirits up. Let's have a quick prayer. Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for being with my family. Thank you for protecting us in this difficult time. We love you, God. And we want to share the joy that Jesus shared when he was here. Be with us this week. Bless all that we do. In Jesus' holy name, amen. I'll see you next time, boys and girls. Have a great week.
This morning's reading of scripture comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verses 15 through 17. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. This is the word of God for the people of God. And may God add a special blessing to the hearing of this word. Let us pray. Holy God, we come to you with profound humility and gratitude. We are so grateful that you have called us together in this place, virtual as it may be, so that we might praise and worship your name. We ask that no matter where we are and when we are, that you would stir your spirit within ourselves and within the places that we reside. We ask, O oh God, that you would make of us a mighty people filled with love. Open our eyes, ears, hearts, and our minds, make fallow the very ground of our souls so it might become good fertile soil for the planting of your holy word, and may that word grow within us with wisdom to bear good fruit for the kingdom of God. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This would be the third week in a six-week Easter season sermon series on the New Testament document that we know as 1 Peter. And indeed, I began this week studying in the second chapter of 1 Peter, verses 19 through 25, in preparation for this morning's sermon. And halfway through that preparation, that contemplation, that prayer, that study in which I was engaged, God interrupted and intervened in my heart and turned my attention to a different text, which is John chapter 21, verses 15 through 17, which we just heard. And so, like I do with any text that God leads me to, I ask the question, God, what is the will and word, the wisdom of God that you are calling me to discern and to deliver to your people in this sermon? And the answer to that question, through prayer and contemplation, through the study of this text that came from God, is that everything's going to be okay. That God has got this. Now, I know that me just saying that, that everything's going to be okay, that God has got this, does not immediately alleviate any experience of anxiety, worry, fear that you might have right now. That, that even though I say everything's going to be okay, there are still things to be worried about, to be afraid of, to be anxious over, to be frustrated about. I, I know because I see it in everybody and I experience it myself. I know that there are people out there who are experiencing a lot of anxiety over the state of the economy. And they know, rightly so, that, that, uh, that you cannot stay closed down forever and that at some point we have got to reopen fully the economy. And because we got to get paychecks in people's hands so they can put food on the table and provide for their families. They know that uh, a Great Depression economically would be a disaster of humanitarian proportions. We, we know that. And at the same time, there is an equally important anxiety over whether we do this too fast or in the wrong way, because if that happens, then uh, we can have a resurgence of infections, and infections mean death, and, and could even mean death of our loved ones. We, we know that there has to be a delicate balance that we have to do it the right way. You might be anxious like I am over the fact that even though those two anxieties exist and are real and are important, that the one thing that we should be doing is not happening that the one thing that we should be doing is putting our partisan beliefs aside, all of our biases, and sitting down at a mutual table of trust and being adults as we discuss together the appropriate things that we can do, making compromises where they need to be made, applying the right type of reasoning, logic, science, research to this question so that we can do it in the right way, so that we might not come up with a solution that is amenable to everybody, but at least it will preserve what is most valuable to us in the long run and let God's grace cover the rest. And, and I don't see that happening. I see quite the opposite. People are becoming more divided, more untrusting, more partisan. And I've, I've washed my hands of it. I've given up 
I'm not going to try to change anyone's mind anymore because it's just not working. And that makes me anxious. I know that there are people who are anxious over the fact that they are cooped up, that they're isolated, that they can't see their loved ones or their friends. If you're like me, you like to hug and shake hands. And of course, we can't do that. If you're like me, you like to congregate in crowds in a sanctuary full of people and, and celebrate the goodness of God. And we can't do that. We're all cooped up in our homes, and, and we have to interface with people through technology, which creates an anxiety of its own. There's, there's something called Zoom fatigue, named after that technology called Zoom that allows for video conferencing, that there's a, a big strain that that actually puts on our brain and nervous system when we're overexposed to it. That's a, that's a kind of stress and anxiety some of us are dealing with. That we are worried because we know that there are members of our congregation and our community who are sick, who are hurt, who are suffering, and we feel this longing in our heart to be there for them, to provide them with our physical presence because that's what we do. We show up for those who are in their time of need, and we can't do that, and that creates a frustration, an anger, a sadness, anxiety. But I'm telling you, what God has told me to tell you this morning is that everything's going to be okay, that God has got this. And I know that's true because I know the scriptures. I know the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation tell the story of how God loves God's people, that we were created out of love, for love, to be in a relationship with God of love, that we have drifted away from God, but nonetheless God has pursued us out of love, that we have been healed, restored, redeemed by that love, I know that it was not sufficient for God to say to us from heaven and from the scriptures and prophets that we were loved, but rather to show us in the person of Jesus Christ that we have someone that walked among us, this man who was the Messiah and the Son of God, who was the very manifestation of love itself in a way that could put its arms around us, that the story of God is the story of God's love for all of us. That when Jesus lived among us, he sacrificed so that he could love us. He sacrificed the right, the power, the authority to stand in judgment and condemnation of all of us who had sinned. But instead, he chose to make us whole. Instead, he chose to feed us when we were hungry. Instead, he chose to heal us when we were brokenhearted. He had chose to include us when we had been kicked out of the group. He loved us so completely that the culmination of that story is the climax of crucifixion when Jesus does not withhold from us his very own life, that he was willing to die for us. That was the extent of his love, only to prove that that love was so powerful it could overcome death itself. And because I believe in that love and because I have read it in the scriptures and the gospels, I know, I know that it's going to be okay, that God has got us because God has loved us. I know that from experience. I don't know about you. I don't know about your life experience. I know about some of you, but I know about mine. I know that there were times in my life when I was as far away from God as you could possibly imagine with no desire to be close to God, that I was living the kind of life that looked nothing like faithfulness. And then when I finally found that life to be unsustainable and not life-giving, I fell down to my knees and I cried out to God, God, help me, God, save me, only to find that God was standing beside me the whole time waiting for me to say those words. That God had swooped down in my time of need and had rescued me so that I'm standing here in front of you today. I know that God loves us because I've experienced that love myself. I know that God loves us because I've read about it in the story of Jesus. And I know that that love is sufficient to bring us through what we're going through right now. Everything's going to be okay. God has got this. This is the time for us to fall to our knees and ask God to deliver us, to save us, to help us. And I know that he's standing right there, willing to do just that. I know it because I know the love of God. But I also know this about love. That love is not synonymous with the way that we use it in terms of an emotion. In other words, love is not merely something we say or something we feel. That love is not just that desire to have something or enjoy something. That, that love is so much deeper than that. That love is this spiritual thing with a spiritual connection that we share with God. And because love is what it is, 
It's not real unless it's genuine and it's mutual, meaning that it's not sufficient that we just be loved. We have to return that love. And the failure of humanity to return love has also been the unfortunate subplot of the entire narrative of the Bible. But the moment that we return our love, that love becomes complete and it becomes life-giving and it will save us in our time of need. I know that to the bottom of my soul. So how do we make that love complete? How do we activate the power that it has in this, our season of uncertainty and anxiety? In the text that we just heard, I believe we find an indication of what the answer is. In the text, we see that Jesus, after he has been crucified and resurrected, has appeared to his disciples for the third time. The first time he appears to them while they're behind closed locked doors and breathes the breath of peace upon them. The second time he appears is to show himself to Thomas, who wasn't there the first time, so that Thomas might touch his wounds and know that his doubt is holy, so that he might declare, my Lord and my God. The third time, Jesus appears on the shore on a beach of the Sea of Galilee. Peter and some disciples are out fishing. They're not having any luck. So this man on the shore says, cast your nets on the other side of the boat. They do so and they bring in so much fish it almost sinks the boat. And at that moment, Peter knows exactly who the stranger is on the beach. He jumps into the water and he swims ashore to see Jesus. They have breakfast together and afterwards we see this conversation. Jesus comes to Peter and he asks him a question, the same question, three times. He says, Peter, do you love me? Now, because we are a people who know the love of God and because we are a people who believe in the love of God and because we are a people who are astute enough to know that when we read about Peter in the Bible, we know that Peter represents the church. We know that the words of Jesus are coming to us too. Jesus asks us, do you love me? Because if you love me, then that love can be complete. If you love me, then that love can have power. If you love me, that love can move mountains. It can certainly overcome a pandemic. Do you love me, Peter, he asks. And Peter responds three times. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. You know all things. And Jesus shows right here in this text that it's not sufficient just to say it or to feel it or to mean it. He says, if you love me, then this is how that love becomes real. Love my sheep. But he says it like this. It's not just that he's called to love the people that Jesus loves. He's called to love them in the way that Jesus loved them. He says, feed my sheep, tend to my sheep, feed my lambs. In other words, don't just love them from afar. Don't just say that you love the people of the world. Don't just say that you love all of God's little children. You have to show that through the service of your actions. And in that way, it's not that you're just loving them. You're loving me. In the way that we serve the world, we are loving God. And that's why we do what we do. It's more than our effort to change things in the world for good. It's more than our effort to feed people because we know that feeding people is a good idea and because we know what it means to be hungry. The reason that we do it ultimately is because this is the way that we return the love that God has given to us. And when we do that, something magical happens and the spirit of Christ is manifest and that spirit will bring us through. So in this time, First Christian Church, I challenge you to be the church. I challenge you to remember that the essence and the identity of a church is not a group of people who meet in a building on Sunday, but rather we are a people that feed the sheep that Jesus loved, that we are a people that express the love that we have for God in a glorious, visible way so that all people might be drawn to that light. And so I challenge you in every moment of this pandemic, I challenge you in every moment of this time that we spend in isolation to find a way to feed God's sheep, to find a a way to love those who are in need, to find a way to share the good news that God has not forgotten about us, that God will make us through. When there are people that we encounter who are hungry, listen to me now, it's our job. It's our job, not the government. It's our job, not somebody else. It's our job, the church of Jesus Christ, to feed them. When there are people who are in need, it is our job to go and to fulfill that need. When there are people who are lost,
lost, it is our job to come and to guide them home. When there are people who are lonely, it is our job to stand beside them so that they know that they are never, ever alone. And when there are people who are in that darkness of depression, isolation, and despair, it is our job, the church, to come and to bring that hope, to tell them, listen, I know what you're feeling because I'm feeling it too. But everything's going to be okay. God has got this. Amen. This is the place where God unites with us and reconciles with us despite all of our sin. We remember the night that Jesus gathered with his disciples at this very table that he took a loaf of bread and after having blessed it, he broke it and he gave it to them saying, take this all of you and eat for this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the invitation to this holy meal. We thank you for the fellowship this meal provides with fellow believers, even when we are celebrating it virtually. The bread is a symbol of your body broken for our sins. Please come and fill us with this bread of life so that we may nourish others for your glory. In the holy name, amen. And in a likewise manner, Jesus took a cup, and after having blessed it, he gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink, for this is the cup of my shed blood, poured out for the forgiveness of your sins. And as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we do proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Today's prayer for the cup comes from Tom Hensley. Our Father, we give thanks to Jesus who celebrated the Last Supper with his disciples. As a denomination, the Disciples of Christ, the communion table is central to our worship. We celebrate it each Sunday and declare that it is open to all who believe that Jesus is the Son of the living God and accept him as our Lord and Savior. In these strange and difficult times when we are forced to worship in our homes, we are allowed to prepare and partake our own communion, for as we do so, we remember the body and blood of Jesus Christ and give thanks to God for the gift of his Son, who died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins and the promise of life after death. In his holy name we pray. Amen. The bread of heaven, the cup of life, you may now partake in holy communion. Spirit. 
And now it is time for us to remember that the church is not this building behind me, but rather it is you, animated by the Holy Spirit of God, to go out into the world and to bring good news. So let us now receive the benediction of God. Loving and holy God, we thank you for our time together in worship. We ask that you would now send us out to be your people, animated by your spirit, filled with love and with good news on our lips. Send us now, O oh Lord, to love and to serve you. Amen. Go in peace. Care for them even when they don't care about us. I believe this from the bottom of my, I believe this, that anxiety that maybe other people have more of, Think we will make it through this thing on that first testament. Nope, not a first testament. It's a second testament. New testament. And forgiveness. And uh, to, for, to extend <clears throat> the world's economy is not going to crumble.